Hello? Oh, yes. Hello, everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about Zapdos um, for the presentation slides. If you like, you can go to um, my GitHub um, repository. Uh, it's csdchant, Zapdos, and it's on the um, GEC workshop branch. So, right here. If everyone's ready. Nope. nope. Okay. Um, unfortunately, uh, my version of Zapdos is a little bit old. So when I was trying to update it, um, my moose, I haven't updated my moose. So I, I tried to do a preload to make sure I had a GEC friendly version. And uh, I had an error due to the update. Um, so I'm going to fix that tonight. Um, so later um, tonight, if you want to download a, you can still download Zapdos um, from uh, the regular Zapdos um, GitHub um, depository. It just won't be the crane coupled Zapdos. Um, later tonight, if you want to go to this repository, to this branch, and this will be the um, prepackaged uh, Zapdos crane edition. Um, is everyone ready to go? Yes. Yep. Okay. Version of Zapdos. Yeah. No. No. My my version of Zapdos works um, still. Um, so hello, my name is Corey Chant. Today we're going to talk about um, Zapdos. A uh, oh, yeah, that was again my GitHub repository. Yeah. Um, it's there. So today we're going to talk about Zapdos, um, a, a low temperature plasma simulation tool in Moose. So a uh, brief overview, we're going to talk about the contents of uh, Zapdos, what exactly are the physics papers, and a, a poster um, presentation based on results gathered from Zapdos. And at the end, we're going to actually go through an input file so you guys can know how to um, use Moose yourself. So again, not Moose, Zapdos. Uh, so Zapdos, as I said before, it's an um, open source application created by Alex Lindsay, a, group, a user group um, for Zapdos or for Moose. As a question, more likely he will um, answer in the, within a day or the week. Um, Zapdos does focus on low temperature plasma simulations. Um, the physics of Zapdos is based off the uh, fluid approach um, of plasmas, which will break down. Um, Modules such as crane for more complicated uh, chemical reactions. So breaking down the physics of Zapdos, um, again, it's just based off the uh, fluid approximation of uh, plasmas. So each one of these, as we uh, know from, or from the day and yesterday, these are broken up to separate kernels. Um, so Zapdos has four main kernels for uh, ions and electrons, broken up into um, time derivative equation. Um, if you have any questions during any of this, don't um, hesitate and stop to ask me any questions. Uh, so the source chart in particular um, can be handled in two ways. There's the original Zapdos way, which is treated by an um, ionization kernel. Or if you want to uh, do more complex chemistries, you can couple it with Crane, which we'll show later today. Uh, along with the fluid equations, we still have to couple it to our potential. This is done through pi one dedicated to your electrons and one for each additional ion charges. So Zapdos by itself can only do singly ionized charge, but coupled with Crane, you can do as many ionized charges as you want. Um, for example, when I'm modeling the cost jet, I usually have um, for um, hydrogen, I usually have two, uh, the HE ion and the HE2 ion. So it is possible to do more complex 
um, ionization. Um, so as you may know from the fluid equations, we need a mobility, diffusivity, and Townsend coefficient. Um, you can either assume that the mobility and diffusivity for electrons is constant, which isn't really true. So then we have to do a little more complex version, which comes from the energy equation. So the energy equation is broke up into fill in the follow or in kernels. You have a time derivative kernel. Um, it's joule heating, um, a kernel designated to the um, energy loss due to ionization, the energy loss due to ex um, excitation, and the energy loss due to elastic collisions. With this, um, Zapdos can uh, look up the mean energy from the mean energy, can find the corresponding um, ionization uh, coefficient, mobility, and diffusivities. Um, it is also pointed out that this is diffusivity is constant throughout the whole run. So if we make that, that's uh, common for uh, cold temperature plasmas. So we, there's no um, energy equation yet for ions. Oh, yeah. It depends on your discharge. So up to you as a user, you can um, choose what is the mobility or depending on what temperature and pressure you're running your model at, you're gonna have to go look that up for your particular ions. Um, so that, that's the user input. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So both um, Zapdos alone and with Crane both use um, Bolsig Plus. So just how um, you learned today that Crane uh, gets, you have to put in a Bolsig Plus table that um, relates um, electron energy to some ionization rate, um, Zapdos does the same thing too. So you get it from a Boltzmann solver. Up to uh, at least three different terms for your voltage. Oh, I went backwards for some reason. Okay. So boundary conditions, I didn't put the equations for the boundary conditions up here because they're um, a little more dense and you don't really need to know every single part to use um, Zapdos. But if you are interested in the raw mathematical form, they are in um, the following boxes. Um, all three boundary conditions for, again, ions, electrons, and uh, electron energy. Um, have a required boundary um, reflective coefficient. So say you have um, a liquid inter interface, correct? Uh, you would assume that your ions are heavy enough that they would not pierce the um, water, so you can say they have a reflecting coefficient of zero. Same thing for, for, for your um, electron, uh, uh, mean energy. Along with that, Zaptos does have the capability of also doing secondary electrons. So that can be um, just entered as, there's a separate kernel, a boundary condition, I mean, for secondary electrons. And again, it's up to you, the user, to determine what the um, coefficient is. There is the default coefficient of, I believe, 0 0.15 for a secondary electron coefficient. Um, but again, it is that optional. You get of a, uh, your particular um, particles pulsing through um, your boundary or interface kernel. Or, yeah, so uh, say if you have, so like I said, ions, if no ions pierce the surface, you have a reflective coefficient of zero. Nothing, everything's, everything's being reflected back. Yeah, one means fully transmitted. Yeah, the papers, the papers, but the papers call it a reflective coefficient. Yeah, I guess uh, the technical term would be a transmission coefficient. The papers, for a reason, decide to use reflective coefficient. Um, uh, so another boundary condition is for your potential. Pot uh, potential can be applied in two different boundary conditions. If you have a DC discharge, um, Moose has a, um, 
uh, KVL logs um, to get their fluxes. Um, and you also have to designate uh, what the area of the plasma will be and what um, uh, the resist um, bo uh, ballistic resistance would be. If you're doing an RF discharge, though, it's a lot simpler. All you have to do is apply um, a Dirichlet function boundary condition, which you have some um, apply. So interface kernels real quickly. Um, oh, yeah, go ahead. This part? Oh, so yes. Um, for uh, so as you know, for a DC discharge, there's usually um, some ballistic resistance applied to the circuit. In order to um, it has to be applied. So your source is um, some source you're applying to your cathode. Um, this right here is the um, uh, potential that's being calculated upon. Um, and again, these are your ion electron flux. It's 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 it is just um, Kirchhoff's uh, law of voltage. It's it's up to you. Um, so you kind of have to um, have some insight on your plasma. So if you have um, a common way to do it is just put the area of your um, cathode. Um, if you have a needle, then uh, try to find the area of your needle point. Um, but it's, um, not right now, though. Um, you could, yeah. So if that goes to the 1D model, then you're using, then you need, you need to get full current, not just current density, right? And you need to put a cross-sectional area, you need to put a cross-sectional area. You've got the, the Z plus chain strain problem where you had to either, you had to manufacture part of your plasma model to, to get a 1D model to work. Uh, Zaptos becomes more advanced. This can become a ver uh, it, it is a capability of Moose to make this a uh, a variable. Um, uh, yeah, quality. Um, but right now in Zaptos, that's not the case. Yeah. Yes. Say again? Yes. Oh, then you would use ballistic resistance to your DC or um, so most papers I've seen, um, it would just be um, in, it would just be your um, a function plus uh, your DT your DC voltage you're applying. Um, I would have to double check. I haven't done that in Zapdos. Um, The top of um, boundary conditions. We don't have one right now that um, basically couples or couples them together or adds them together. Um, but that that certainly is so that can be future work or the, um, someone can add a third boundary condition such as that for a potential. Can you add more than do you have? Go ahead. Um, right now, no, the, the, if, uh, the area is only applied to the cathode. Um, right now, a lot of uh, the simulations assume that the, um, the anode is ground. If you're assuming in a ground anode, you're just putting a, a Dirichlet boundary condition to it to zero. With a different applied voltage? Yeah. Yeah, if you have two, if you have two plates and they're both at different potentials, then yes, you can apply the same boundary condition to both with different areas. With different areas. Correct. Okay. Yeah.
Yeah. So you're going to use a proposed voltage source that's bound. Mm -hmm. So the, the will that go through it itself, or? I haven't tried using a um, the, uh, the, uh, the this boundary condition to both. Um, so I would I would believe so, but I can't sit it. So the short answer yeah. is that the condition hasn't been, hasn't been tried yet. But yeah. It seems like the pieces are in place. It just hasn't hasn't you know, hasn't been configured, hasn't been rendered. Yeah. So if, if there's any um, physics that we just discussed that you didn't see that we just mentioned up here, um, if everything's up there, it, it should capture it then. Um, depends on what your, uh, so this is whatever, um, this is what's being calculated by, um, Zapdos. This is what, um, what you apply to it. So you could put, um, oh, you have, then. Yes, yeah, yeah, you can burn it with both. So it may be colored as a side. Yes, or yes. Or yeah. Like, are the ones available for damage is very rich or in Corona itself? Um, not Corona. There has been some for uh, um, dielectric discharge, but the results aren't matching up with ComSol 100% yet. Um, but they are in the works. Um, don't know why it keeps going backwards sometimes. Um, interface kernels, um, like we've uh, introduced earlier today, um, Zeptos has interface kernels within it. Um, right now, the only interface uh, um, that you can use is the flux of the uh, electrons. So right now, only electrons can go from interface to interface. And again, earlier today, how this is done is by, um, with wa uh, liquid water interaction, it was only assumed that only the electrons pierce the water. Um, so, uh, for um, density, in order to av avoid um, negative density, which physically can't happen, but mathematically can, um, uh, the densities are taken in long calculates on, and there are um, um, auxiliary kernels that pop out the log form of the operated densities to give you the actual number density of the um, of whatever particle your um, ions or electrons, and also even um, excitation sites, um, excitation number density do not change throughout the calculation. Um, scaling, so uh, mentioned before, you can choose whatever units you want um, into the new framework, but for Zapdos, in order for uh, to relieve the headache, all you have to do is um, set up a position into meters, and if meters, if you want to scale to no, millimeters, um, you can do so. Um, same thing with your voltage. Uh, you have two options for your voltage. You can either um, work with volts or kilovolts. Um, also, if you want to work uh, with moles instead of number density, you can also scale to that too. Um, so these are the, uh, the three main scaling factors that uh, uh, Zapdos has so that the user doesn't have to worry about unit conversions that when they do their input. Trace by uh, Moose, because um, un, um, unlike training right now, Zapdos is an official Moose application that's tracked, um, which means it, it gets updated as um, uh, Moose gets updated. Uh, so this would be the official one. Um, all you have to do is how you've been selling Moose and Crane. Um, do note though, if you do get the Zapdos, um, this, uh, this Zap version of Zapdos is not updated yet to be coupled with Crane, but with just a few extra steps, you can couple it with Crane. I'll show you those steps right now. So, oh, go ahead. Oh. Yes. Okay, so the Moose and with Crane. So it'll be a prepackaged with Crane application. If you want, if you just can't wait and you want to get the official Zapdos application now, um, this is the page to get. And you can run um, uh, the liquid interface um, input file that is in there, and I'll show the results that you should be getting if you run that application. Um, 
but uh, yeah, but like I said, if you just wait later later tonight, you will get the coupled version. Um, Yeah, so if you get my version, you're not going to get the, the, uh, um, the official Moose followed version. You're getting my um, modified version. Um, uh, so in order to modify, it has to go through several steps in order to get modify, um, which we just haven't took those steps yet. So I so to, so tonight I have to scan through mine, make sure nothing crashes, because um, I've modified my Zapdos quite a bit. Um, so I have to go through, make sure everything's right before I want to put it. So before you guys have, because I don't want to release it, and then you guys have a um, broken version of Zapdos on your computer for whatever reason. So if they want to try Zapdos yes. without frame, they can go to the, the release version. Yep, that's what. Yes. So, so yeah, there, there's so watch out because you're about to attack by Moose, which means in order to get my uh, Zapdos, mine's from. So you would have to fork from me after you download it. Um, I'm not too familiar with the inner workings of GitHub, how you fork between accounts. Um, that is something to watch out for. Um, mine's in a whole other repository. It's not part of this repository. Um, it's not just branched off. Clark, yes, go ahead. Not that's coupled with Crane, no. Okay. okay. So the Crane coupled one will be available to be. Correct. After you email. Yes. Um, so these, these were just steps to show um, if you had an older version of Zapdos already to uh, couple it, all you would have to copy this and paste it into your make file. Um, that, that's, that's all you would have to do for your make file. Almost. So the, yeah, there's more steps which... So don't do this right now. Yeah, yeah this, this, this is for information for anybody who wants to go back here and do it. Um, and this is the extra step you have to take. Um, so, no, no, um, you have to go in, you have to do some uh, coding. So you have to go into the make file and modify the make file. I'll use the, com uh, the complete Zapdos coupled version. Okay. Um, cause again, along with that, there's some more kernels you're going to have to download, um, in order to have it properly coupled with Crane. Um, these kernels are eventually uh, similar to the one in Zapdos, except they're, uh, they work with Crane. Uh, they're, uh, they're modified for Crane. Um, but again, this is just for a reference. Just wait later tonight. Zapdos, um, what has been done already with Zapdos is to give you an idea of um, what its limitations might be and what you might be able to do with um, this application yourself. Um, so most of the work has been done with atmospheric plasmas. We're going to go into a water um, plasma interface. Um, we're going to uh, microscale uh, gas discharge for enhancing thermal energy conversions. Uh, and then I'm going to go into uh, modeling the uh, cost jets. Um, was uh, used to model the water liquid interface. Um, so we have a um, DC discharge with some ballistic resistance, um, a microplasma, above some water surface. So in our model, this cathode would be a boundary condition uh, to our, um, our uh, Kirchhoff's law. This would be our grounded anode. And right here would be our interface kernel. And if um, at those boundary conditions and those interface uh, conditions, you can change the um, reflect, um, reflection coefficients. Um, 
and what has been shown is that in the water, it doesn't really change the uh, electron um, density for the water itself, but for the plasma near the interface, depending on what coefficient you use, could drastically change um, your electrodensity at the surface. So as a user, it's matter for your plasma. Um, and along with uh, Zapdos, Zapdos does have interface uh, auxiliary kernels to find such stuff as your electric field um, and your electric temperature. Um, so just like the auxiliary kernels where we uh, found out early today, Zapdos has a whole list of auxiliary kernels um, used to find constantly. So if there's ever an um, auxiliary kernel that you don't see that's there, um, you can either try to make it yourself or contact the Google group and see if it's already being developed on. Um, so along with Liquid Interface, um, uh, uh, people from um, Notre Dame, John Hayes and David Go, um, have used Zapdos to um, of this, what you basically have is a um, hot a cathode emitting electrons to a cold anode. Um, the problem with this, though, is that eventually you're going to have electrons that build up um, between the cathode and anode, reducing the um, the flow. And they're going to. And one way to prevent this is to apply a um, platform for um, between um, power and distance. Uh, to optimize. So what they've been doing with uh, Zapdos is that they have got a, um, a relationship between the distance between the um, interface, between the two um, cathodes, um, and a relationship between their applied voltage and right here. Basically a plot of current as a function of applied voltage and distance. Um, again, they do this for several different, um, oh yeah, Say again? Units of current. Units of current. Um, it's not up here, but by default in um, Moose, it's set up. Yeah, that, that's the default in, um, side of uh, the Moose's um, auxiliary kernel. Um, along with this, they did um, net power production. Uh, again, as a bit of. Um, a function of distance and voltage. So what, what this is, what I'm trying to show you here is that with Zapdos, and it's being used in the field right now to do it, um, and Zapdos right now has all the capabilities uh, to do it. So if you need to go back and do some type of optimization problem for some um, uh, DC discharge, um, atmospheric DC discharge, Zapdos can do that right now. Um, Along with that, uh, so the other is the cost jet. So uh, um, just to talk about the cost jet real quick, a uh, cost jet is an um, atmospheric plasma source where you have some uh, jet of gas going through here. You have an um, applied cathode, a ground anode. The cathode has a RF discharge, or RF voltage applied at um, the standard out. Um, in order to couple the more exotic um, reactions that are needed for this, uh, the following results are, have been coupled to Crane. So the previous results you have sh uh, that I've shown you have been uh, Zapdos by itself. The results I'm going to show you now that how accurate can we get? Oh, like well, what, what is this? Uh, so where would this be used for in like industry? Oh, yeah, so. Um, uh, in particular, one of the biggest uh, um, emerging research fields is medical plasmas. Um, so plasmas, that's due to all the chemistry that can happen within the plasma near the surface of the skin. Um, so the, the cost jet right here is a reference source for experimentalists. Um, uh, and you know, yeah, now modeling people, correct. Um, uh, so yeah, so one of the emerging uh, fields is uh, is like water uh, is water purification. Um, I don't know. I don't know too many uh, if if it's if the cross jet itself has been used for water purification experiments. But that is another application you can use for atmospheric plasmas. Uh,
Oh. Yes, we're going to uh, show some results um, for, we're going to show, so next two slides are going to be um, experimental results and pick results. Um, oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, right here, we have two different gases for the uh, cost jet as a function of electron density and power. Um, for argon, as you can see, uh, Zeptos actually can line up quite well with argon. Um, unfortunately, right now, the same cannot, the same cannot be said with uh, helium. This seems to be happening at um, this uh, transition stage, which marks the transition from alpha mode to uh, gamma mode for helium. Um, and for, uh, it's been shown that for uh, having an applied voltage for an RF discharge, if you set your um, voltage to some amplitude and have it constant, you'll have multiple solutions. So you'll have error in your code if you do such a thing. The way uh, after each cycle, calculate your power. And if your power is not at what you want, change your vo voltage accor accordingly until you do reach that desired power. Um, Zaptos does not have that capability yet. We only have the applied voltage um, boundary condition. But 
as we've learned today, if we have something like a pros processor, that if we pros process the power after each um, RF cycle, we can put that into a boundary condition um, and then change our voltage accordingly. Another reason for error could be uh, reaction rates. I might not have the right reaction rates for this um, helium transition, um, but I would like to first go through and do add that extra boundary condition so you can just uh, put in a desired power and change your voltage accordingly at the cathode. Uh, Alex, what about the thermal transition at the time? So, yes. Um, so, the, the physical application of uh, the film, and then, as, and then as soon as it does, when your plasma does fully encapsulate your um, cathode, it, that's called a transition to gamma mode. Um, so, what this has been shown to do is um, you, you lined up. I don't have this figure. I probably should if I ever going to talk about this in the future. Um, but it'll show that if you have a plot of um, voltage and then a plot of power right here, your, you increase your power, your voltage will go up. Then as you increase your power some more, your voltage actually goes down. Um, and that's where the multiple solution comes in if you just do that applied voltage. Um, so it, it Yes. So that, that's, that's basically, it, it has to do it, um, at how much surface area the plasma is covering the cathode. So for PIC models, um, PIC models uh, have been used to, is, it's a two millimeter gap until instead of a one millimeter gap. Um, if I haven't mentioned this before, the cost jet uses a one millimeter gap between cathode and anode. This simulation does a two millimeter gap. Um, but it is referenced in a lot of cost jet papers, so that's why I choose it as a reference paper. Um, as we see, oh, oh. Um, as we see, the physics though, the, the actual phenomena of what's happening, um, one reason for this could be possibly that in um, the PIC paper, they said that they modeled um, helium ions. They were not specific of if they uh, did singly ionize um, helium ions, they weren't specified if it was just um, HE ions or HE2 ions. Um, uh, for the crane modeling um, with Zapdos, I included both uh, HE ions and um, HE2 and right reaction rates, um, which would explain why we have the same physical behaviors, but we're off by magnitudes. Um, so this, this is electron density, electric energy, um, the electric energy field, electric field, sorry, which is um, applied as a auxiliary kernel. You can also do. Um, so that is, um, it takes a while, just because what you will do in the beginning is do an um, adaptive time step, but if you keep doing that type um, adaptive time step for an RF discharge, if it goes above a certain point, you're not capturing um, the frequency quite right. Um, so you'll get errors, and then it has a back step, and then it'll go back up, and then back step, go back up. Um, so I found it easier just to set a maximum better than this. Um, so I set that at um, 20th of the, um, 20th of the uh, applied um, frequency, just so that's enough points to accurately model the wave. Um, and it, it, it takes about an hour. Um, for this PC right here, um, which is eight um, processors, um, takes roughly an hour, hour. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, but of course this problem does rely on uh, the computer, right? So if you have a nice beefy um, uh, desktop or if you have, um, some of you sharing you know, computing power with other computers, which remember, uh, Moose is scalable to that. Um, so you can certainly do that to decrease your um, computational time. The uh, good news is DC discharges only take a few seconds. Um, our
Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not, yeah, uh, I have done some 2D, uh, um, discharges and I haven't ever run out of memory. The only problem is they take longer. Um, so, so far, um, for the 2D results I have done, um, I haven't run into a memory issue. Um. Don't know why I keep flipping back. Okay, um, so that's um, the the papers and uh, that have been released so far using Zapdos. Hopefully, you guys will use Zapdos so we can release some um, some input files, so you know what exactly we have to put in an input file to model correctly. We're not going to touch current. We're not going to touch um, headers or bodies files. We're just we're just looking at it. we're just going to look at the input file. This is the third place you told us to get Zapdos. Where do we get Zapdos? What? No, this isn't where you get. Yes, it is. I'm sorry. Um, there's there's a lot of places you can get Zapdos. Uh, no, this this is fork. This is uh, meant to delete this. This page was just meant for the Google group. We have a Google group um, for Zapdos users in particular. If you ask, ask a question, we'll answer it um, pretty quickly, especially Alex Lindsay. He'll definitely answer it very quickly. Um, and if you have more general uh, group uh, uh, Moose questions, uh, Moose has a Google group. Okay. Um, also, any work cited, if you want to look at any papers, um, that was mentioned. I made a nice neat table of all the kernels and boundary conditions in Zapdos, where you have the name of it, the equation, and the description. So on your, if you want to go back and like, well, what exactly does this kernel or boundary condition do, you, you can look at this PowerPoint and look at these tables. So for right now, So we're going to look at. Fine. Okay. Um, so we're going to look at two input files: one a Zapdos only input file, and then one a Zap and Crane input file. Um, and just show you uh, um, what the difference between the two. Um, as results go, these files will output the exact same results. Um, so here. Uh, um, position you want by a factor of whatever you want. Um, so the, the position scaling is a lot flexible. Right now we're going to uh, um, 10 to the negative 3, so that would be uh, from millimeters, uh, from uh, meters to millimeters. Um, Zaptos does have the capability for um, time scaling. Um, that's more for 2D to help the 2D ver um, models to converge better. Um, it's not necessary for 1D. Uh, global parameters, we haven't really talked about global parameters. There are the same type of um, inputs you put in every single kernel. So instead of doing that every single time, you can do a, a global params and just set them here. So here we have an offset of uh, 20. This is to help stabilize using the log form we're using for the um, densities. Um, here we're saying that our uh, potential units we're using is kilovolts. Um, here we're saying that we're all using moles to help for the confusion, uh, conversion. And this right here is just saying our log form of uh, the um, density. So to avoid um, that, so to avoid um, instabilities as that approaches zero, we just set some offset for it. The standard offset is 20. Um, you usually would not mess, that's, you, that's just for our numerical purpose. Um, there should be almost no reason why you would mess with this offset value. This is just so that we wouldn't, uh, there, there wouldn't be any errors while, um, while using the log form of our densities. Um, um, mesh modifiers, which you didn't go over with, um, if you're doing a 1D, all this is saying is I'm naming um, my uh, boundary on my very left side, I'm naming it left, and on my very right side, I'm naming it right. That's for the boundary conditions. Um, problem type, 
It's a finite element problem. Um, preconditioning, as we saw earlier today, we're using SMP. Uh, most of the time, this is the standard preconditioning you want to use with Zapdos. Um, unless you get a little more advanced um, executable file, um, we're going to use a transient um, uh, execution, so a transient solve. Um, our end time is going to be 0 .0, um, 0 0.01. Um, hmm? 0.1, yes, sorry. Um, 0.1 seconds. Uh, yes, yeah, so the, 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 the default time that Zapto uses are seconds. So when in Zapdos have been tested over and over again to be exact. And if you have exact Jacobians, you can use Newtip method. It's only when you're uncertain of your Jacobians when you want to go to the um, um, P, PFJK version. Um, yeah, yes, yes, correct. Um, but because we're, sure, we're certain that all our Jacobians are correct, we can use Newtip methods. Um, here are some pet C options. Um, most of the time, you would not need to mess with these. If, when you get more familiar with pet C, you can go ahead and try to mess with the pet C options. Um, right here, um, below this, um, we crash. It ends the um, simulation. Again, our max interval, uh, our uh, max iterations. If we get up above this, we stop. Um, mash, uh, we're doing a DC discharge, so we're going to do. Um, an adept time step, so our time step is going to keep growing if it gets better and better. Um, output, so this is just saying um, we're going to print out an Exodia or an exo, uh, an, uh, .exo file. Um, also, if you choose, you can also name reasons. This will help. This will show the value of our residual norm. Um, so the kernel, so the kernels can be broken up into um, four different uh, sections. Um, your electrons, ions, um, Poisson's equation, and mean energy. Right now, Zapdos doesn't have a really nice action like um, Crane has. Well, we, we are going to work on that. So right now, each of these has to be input. It's a fluid equation, so you have your time derivative, your avection term of your flux, your, di your diffusivity term of your flux. This isn't, we're not coupling a crane, so this is Zapdos only, so we need a term for our ionization. Um, and again, this is cut just for, since we are using the log form of our densities, we need some stabilization. No, you would not. No, that's correct. We, um, I'll, I'll show you the input file of it, and you, you do, will not need this. This is only if you have a time. Um, uh, avection, diffusion, ionization. Again, you wouldn't have an ionization if you were coupling to crane, and uh, the log, a stabilization. Um, these three are just our Poisson's equation. We have the uh, potential side of our Poisson, Poisson's equation, um, our term for our ions, and our term for our electrons. Um, and then here comes the um, our mean, we have our joule heating, and we have energy loss from ionization, um, elasticity, and um, excitation. Uh, joule heating? It, our, our, our potential is a variable. So it yes. That, is that good? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, for crane, uh, uh, crane you would not need to you would not need these uh, kernels because the crane will look up the um, energy for the particular reactions and add those kernels um, with uh, the uh, crane action. Um, again, that. Um, here is just our variables. We have potential, um, ion, uh, electrons, ions, mean energy. So four variables, four coupled variables. Um, and here's just some uh, auxiliary kernels we can look at. 
sorry, auxiliary variables, you can find the electron temperature. Um, X is our position. Um, the reason why we have a, a position uh, uh, auxiliary variable is because we really want. Um, we also remember we're taking the log form of our, dens of our densities, so we need our auxiliary kernel to find out what the true number density is. Um, yep. So along with that, we can find our electric field. We can find our current for our electrons, um, ions, and the total current for our gas. Um, uh, densities. Um, our two currents, and in here, um, our total current of our gas is simply just the um, adding these, adding our two different uh, currents. Um, the reason why it's just adding is because this is sensitive to the charge, so that it will you will get a negative current for electron. Using a DC discharge, so this is our um, uh, Kirchhoff's law of voltage. Um, potential to our cathode. Um, we're setting our anode to ground, so that's just a Dirichlet boundary condition set to zero. Um, we have uh, uh, energy flux boundary condition to our um, cathode. And wait, no, in this case it would be, I'm sorry, wait, yes, talking about for the potential? Yeah. Yes. So for, for this particular case, we're applying a, neg a negative charge voltage. Yeah, so in this case, since the other is negative, our zero is positive. Yes, so, wait, so, so right now we're just designated our left side to be our cathode, which is negative, which we're applying a negative voltage to, and our right side would be our anode, which is at ground. Um, so if we are applying uh, applying a positive voltage, um, the yeah, yeah, it this is naming convention. Yeah, yeah, this is whatever you want. Um, okay, so our um, energy flux at our boundary condition on one side. Um, your ion is uh, divided into, its flux is divided into two parts, a diffusivity and a vection at your boundaries, and your aim exact ones for uh, right. Um, also initial conditions, so since uh, we want to have something in our, uh, we want, as a, just as for a numerical aspect, we have to have some starting ionization level. Um, we can't, the, the code won't run if you have initial condition of zero. So we just set some very small value so we can start our simulation. Um, so it, it, has, it has to do, yeah, it has to do with the boundary condition. Um, what, the, say that again? Yeah, because well, we're using log form. Log form. Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. So there's, like, the density divided by uh, how the average number, so lower density, and then the log of that. So if you multiply that, if you get the exponential of negative 21 and multiply that by the quotient of the average temperature transfer, and then the electron density is the electron. So. Um, to start with um, for our initial condition. User objects, so this is special for the, um, uh, for the DC discharge. This will be changed in the future. Um, it, for um, when Zapdos was being developed, you ha uh, it was just easier to do debugging with using um, user objects. So this is the resistance in your cathode um, area. Yes. So the parameter is minus 21. As you explained, there is a, there's a formula there. Is it given in given somewhere? Yeah. 
Uh, no, that, that's, just, that's just assuming a, a positive, um, a linear slo a slope of your potential. It's just to give it a little nudge to help the code run. No. Okay. Um, yep. So the the user objects are just for the the DC um, boundary condition. Again, this is the area of resistance and the electric charge, um, and then our material. Finally, our material, um, argon. So we're using argon gas. Um, so real quickly, the same input file, but with Crane, is exactly the same with just a few differences, so I'll go over them real quickly. Um, as we mentioned before, you don't have to put ionization in if you're coupling with Crane. Crane takes care of that. No ionization. All that, so that would be an extra variable you put in. And XI states will have their own time derivative, diffusivity, and again, if they're in a log form stability. Um, energy equation, um, the difference is Crane will help take care of uh, um, the, the energy losses um, for uh, our energy equation. So we don't need that. That will be done by the action command for our excited states. And then our auxiliary variable for our neutral gas. Oh, because these are. Crane. Um, size that. The rest, the boundary conditions uh, stay the same. There's no changes to the boundary conditions, except we do have that excited state. So we do have to add boundary conditions for that excited state. Um, again, it's not charged, so there's no evection and only a diffusivity term. Yeah, I'll show you that. Let, let me finish this real quick, and I'll show you where that's at. Um, and then you have your action. This action is from, uh, you can, it helps uh, Crane put in the ionization and the energy losses terms. Um, very similar to what you've just seen in the Crane demonstration. Um, down here we have uh, just um, uh, a list, um, um, if you have the correct um, reaction rates for them. Yes. Yeah, another question for you. Whenever uh, something reacts, it will increase the reactive stress. So, so that actually acts out of the PowerPoint. So, so it, it, it's not used to determine the reaction rates, it's to determine the energy losses. So, 
before I run, just to show you real quickly, because someone asked, we'll, um, this is kind of going to a little bit C++. It puts right here on the make file. If you go down, this right here tells you, hey, couple with crane. Um, as I yeah, um, except it's not as simple as I'm making it. Um, there are more telling, hey, Zapdos, use Crane. Okay. okay. Um, and obviously for that to work, you have to have Crane installed. Yes. Otherwise, you'll be trying to troubleshoot and something that doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay. But you already have it installed. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is to run that they look different, but they're actually going to output the same. They're equivalent uh, statements. One's a Zapdos only, one's a crane. Um, but the crane is much more powerful because you can add more chemical reactions if you desire. Basically, what we've done with uh, Zapdos is the limitation to the plasma, that we can't add any more, any, any more type of reaction. Anybody have any questions? Um, I don't know if anybody's told you this yet, um, but if you use Ubuntu or if you're just using your terminal, and you'll you'll get you use. And so if you're going to run like uh, input files a lot, instead of just typing it out the whole time, um, you can just hit back and rename your input file and run again. Just some shortcuts if you didn't know about the terminal. So here, at file run. DC discharge, so it didn't take long. And like I was mentioning before, we just have to go up. I named it such that we don't have to uh, change much. Just add a again, DC discharge, so this isn't going to take too long. OK. Um, pair of view. So again, you know, we've been messing with. It's going to look at. Remember, um, we want if we want to look the, at the number density, we have to do the em dash uh, lin. Um, if we do this one, this just gives us the log form of it. Um, little blocky right here because remember these are auxiliary kernels um, so they, they were evaluated at the node and then interpolated in between that's why you're getting these straight lines and these drops offs um, to fix that remember we did a position auxiliary kernel so we can plot against our X point which was our X auxiliary for the Zepto's crane If you're wondering what this big line here is, that is the um, excited like, um, ion. So let me just pull up the ion Rx position. And if you look, um, hope I can proving that they're the exact same plot. So then the reason is because we use the exact same reaction uh, equations. Um, the only difference is, for Zapdos only, we max it out. That's as far as we can go with Zapdos when it comes to chemical reactions. With Crane, the actions you can put into Crane, um, along with uh, plasma um, uh, capabilities of Zapdos, you can model quite a bit of um, right, uh, plasma discharges. Um, any questions so far? Is, is that, um, is the file part of the Zapdos package? This one? Yeah. It's going to be one for the um, I can put it up if you would like. Yes. Yep. Um, is Casey here? Uh, 
Um, I'm, if anybody, what? Yeah, yeah, that was the crane cut, I mean, um, cause if, if, if I want to do any, uh, RF discharges, that's, that's going to take a while, like I said. Yeah, I think RF discharge is probably the best thing to do is to have it put a case in. Yeah, I'll, yeah, it's, I, like I said, I'll put in the cost, so you saw results from the cost jet, I'll put those in to the GEC workshop, uh, let me know if you get any discrepancies, but you should get exactly the same thing. Um, Um, planned sessions for the workshop. Um, so if anybody else has any questions or uh, wants to be added to the workshop GC group, which there's uh, some more links to some resources and so you can always have that available at easy reference, then please let me know and I can add you um, immediately. Um, and otherwise, um, if you have any um, sit to the group, email me, um, email any of us, you have all of our contact information inside the slides. And so we're we're trying to, to make this as easy and as, as as easy an, an experience as we can to 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 get people started in this framework. So um, please let us know if you if you have more questions and concerns. So um, thank you. And uh, sure. so I'm just kind of in, in closing, I, I wanted to understand that that the plasma simulation effort in, within Moose is is relatively new. Okay. There was one student who was working on it up until about, up until, you know, two or three years ago. And then we started to, and then grew the community to the point where now we can add things like chemical reactions and we can start, and, and, and soon we'll be having, what I really want to emphasize other than the utility of this and what we've added to it so far is the potential for individual groups to make these types of contributions, not only to the existing applications, not just to Crane and to Zapdos, but to develop your own modules or your own applications that are then, that, that eventually can then be shared with the plasma community. You, you can always develop your own applications. I mean, we're all researchers and so we're all trying to do our own work and don't necessarily want to be sharing our goodies with the world until we're, you know, we're, we're pretty sure what we're doing is, is sound. And the, the capability is there because you can always pull it off of the you can always pull it off of the framework, develop your own things, and run and go, right? Um, but you know, but the hope is, is that eventually, as it as it as it gets something that can be about elk, we'll be talking about pick an animal. Which, by the way, for those of you who didn't know, everything's got to be named after an animal. Zapdos is the only application actually. Pokemon Pokemons are animals. Apparently, we've we've graduated to Pokemon. We've run out of animals, so now we do Pokemons. Um, but we're hoping in the future that there's not just two applications. There's four, there's five, there's six. But I'd like to see this become a capability and showing results that have been developed in the Moose framework. But in order to do that, it really, that, you know, the framework here is built around, you know, the, you know a, a more of a, a distributed community development of this applicability. So thanks for going through two days of, 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 of slogging through to learn this and we really look forward to seeing what applications and what results uh, you guys can come up with in the future. So with that, I guess we'll cl very, very flattered that you guys stuck it out for two days. This was not an easy workshop to sit through. I, I, I totally, I was, I, I give you guys a ton of credit for doing this for two straight days and uh, hats off to you and I can't wait to see what you do with it in the future. So thank you.